what I want to discuss tonight is an idea that I wanted to develop through this Chabra, which is the uniqueness of Jewish ethics. Not focusing on the uniqueness of Jewishness in terms of, I don't like this term, but we're going to use the term in terms of ritual. People, what makes a Jew different? Well, it's on tefillin, or sitzes, or Shabbos, or something like that. But to many, many people, the perception of ethics is that basically if you're ethical, you're an ethical Jew, you know, like, like a good person doesn't steal. So a good Jew doesn't steal, and a good person, it's, it's not a unique law to say don't steal. Because it's ethical. That's the way people think in terms of what the term in, in halacha, mishpatim the laws that are understandable, and so forth. And the fact is, is that there is somewhat of a uniqueness to Jewish ethics. It's not easily defined where you sit there and point, hey, no one not Jewish doesn't have this ethic, and so forth. But it reflects a certain perspective on life. And it yields some distinctions in how we see life and how ethical members of other faiths or other perspectives also see life. And the fact is, is that generally we can see them as ethical, but you can point out a certain distinction in their in their perspective. So that's what I want to I want to deal with. And one of the things I want to deal with tonight is the concept of love. Okay, what we mean by love. And um, basically, you can hear other people making similar statements around the world and so forth. But the fact is, is people don't recognize in certain ways how the Jewish perspective on love can be very, very different. Even as you talk about the value of love and that's shared by people, how the perspective is somewhat different than other people's perspective or other systems' perspective. And what I want to use as the foil is the difference between the Jewish concept of love and the Christian concept of love. And my starting point was, is what is considered to be the highest form of love? What is considered to be the, the, the <coughs> ideal um, model of love? In Christianity, it is clearly parental love. Okay, the highest form of love from the from the Christian perspective is the concept of the love of the parents, specifically the love of the mother to the child. Okay, so it's parental love that is that is considered to be the the purest form of love. Okay, um, this is reflected in Christianity, the concept of the mother Mary, and so forth. It's reflected in Catholicism, where a person's a father, a person's a mother, you know, mother superior, right? The, the, the priest is referred to as father, and so forth and so forth. And the idea of love coming from that nature. Okay. In Judaism, the ideal form of love, or the highest form of love, is though husband wife, marital love. Okay? That is considered to be the highest form of love. Okay? Now, that's indicated by the use of the marital relationship as the model of love between the Jewish people and God in Shir Shirim, in the Song of Songs. Shlomo Hillach, right? King Solomon, wrote that, wrote, wrote that, that, that song with the model of, of romantic marital love. And that is really the idea. Now, that can be a very interesting idea in the sense that you have what's the ideal love? Is the ideal love of between husband and wife or is the ideal love between parent and child? Now, obviously in Christianity, the problem becomes in terms of marital love is the problem with sexuality in the sense that Christianity completely challenges the concept of marital love as an ideal form of love because of the sexual component within it. And that arises from the fact that the sexual component is considered to be 
a self-serving component. Okay, because the person the person wishes satisfaction for for their drive with this in this relationship. So for Christianity it challenges that. And that's why when you go back to the to, to the Middle Ages, there was always the idea of the love oh I forget the term. Um, but the love for the maiden who you did not touch. Right? Um, in, in in medieval thought there was always um, it was more. It was. It was a, a, a an idea that 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 um, there's there's this woman that you love, but you wouldn't touch her because you know because there is um, that would take away from the love of it. In Judaism, you now have to deal with so that that was Christianity's argument. So Christianity said parental love is totally selfless because a parent will die for. A child, clearly. Um, it's like the joke I made with Michael last week, right, and Naomi, when they both ran to get the muffin, if you remember at the class last week, right, they both ran for the muffin. And Michael won and got the muffin. So and Naomi was sad and she said, said so Michael said, you can, you can have the muffin. So I looked at Naomi and said, did you really think you weren't going to get the muffin if, if, if Michael got there? He's your father. What do you think is going to happen? You won both ways. You got it. You'll keep it. He gets it. He's going to give it to you. He's a father. So the truth of the matter is that's why parental love is considered to be this highest form of love because it is totally selfless. The idea of giving to your children. So, so in Judaism saying that marital love is more significant, you have to deal with these two challenges. How can it be more significant than parental love? Because it is... Because it does seem parental love is more selfless. So that's the argument of what love is. And second of all, what about marital love? Why would marital love be more significant when it has, when it has the, 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 the question from the sexual component from Christianity? Okay, so the point is, is what you really have to do is understand underlying constructs which are very, very different, which leads to the difference between the two. So parental love is... Ancient, not unique to humans. Mm -hmm. Something that's very much um, observable in penguins or seahorses or mm -hmm. whatever. Whereas marital love is unique to humans. Okay. Okay. So, so that, 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 that way. Well, I, it, it's it, it it can explain certain things from from. I I don't think. Um. It, it's. It's interesting because people tie sexuality to animals, and so you see the animal. But the truth is, the animals also have parental love, if if it's love. I mean, the point is, is that it, it it's not going to be where I'm going to go, but hopefully at the end, it will, the way I'll explain it will explain that. Yeah. Um, you go deal with this Because, because the fact is, is that is that you have there's two types of ava, ava taloi b'davar and ava shena taloi b'davar. So an ava that's taloi b'davar is the relationship of Amnon and Tamar, and that was obviously a sexual relationship. Okay, so the point is, is that relationship, the sexuality, was considered to be. Um, an example of improper sexuality in the love relationship. So that's uh, that's always people you see. That's a problem with sexuality and so forth and so forth. But was that particular case of sexuality that so the truth is the, the 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 example of Ava is the Ava between Devin and uh, and Yonason. and that obviously is not a sexual love. That was lo that that was a love between the two human beings. So the fact is is that. I think at the end of, of, of my perception, I wasn't, but there, it's, it's, it is given as an example because it absolutely was, was really a consideration for each other and so forth. Um, why Devin and Yosin are used as the examples is, I think. I, I mean, the fact is, is because there is a relationship between human beings, but sometimes 
when you think in terms of marital relationships, the marital unit is beyond the relationship. The union of the marital unit is even beyond the concept of relationship. So the, 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 the way I would, I would explain it, first of all, just to the aside, the use of David and Yonason in Perkyavos is used by some people and this is, I'm just saying this, and it's something I even feel bad about having taped, is there are people who try and turn the David Jonas relationship into a homosexual relationship, which when we say it, we obviously say it with tremendous disgust and so forth, that two tzaddikim would be um, presented in that mode because they had such a strong relationship to, to each other. So the fact is, is people, because they're that, that close, there has to be some kind of sexual connotation to it. And that's the sort of overflow from, from the concepts that I think I'm going to get to. But the point is, is, is that I think what they're talking about is that marital love even goes beyond the concept of being an ava, an ava as a model because it creates a singular unit between two people. As long as you have a relationship between two people and two friends and two for like Dovin and Yosef, they still are two separate individuals. The marital unit eventually becomes a love where they really are perceived to be one unit. Okay? Um, I remember when I was in, in uh, going for Suicha and Eretz role. And my bochen, the, the, the individual who gave me smicha, seems that he liked me. So, so um, I was talking one day, and he said, he said, he thought he, he felt that he was trying. He, so he said to me, you know, um, he said, it's funny, it's full of funny because he was farty. So he said, you damn much ha 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 Masham uh, Ravad, that, that's in the, I can't remember exact words, but he basically said, you know what the Ravad says? It's brought down in the beginning, in the introduction to the, of the tour to Evan Hazer, which is one of the sections of, of Shulchan Aruch. So he said, you know, do you know what the Ravad says? Now, the Ravad is a major, major commentary, major, major uh, Rishon on par with the Rambam. He wrote glosses on the Rambam when he disagreed with the Rambam. Basically, whenever you study Rambam, you clearly always study the Ravad. The point is, for Ashkenazis, the way you pronounce it is the Ravad. So anytime you learn the Rambam, you always learn the Ravad. But the Sephardi was saying to him, And I looked at him like with a blank face, what's a Ravad? And here he is, you know, he's, he's, you know, I'm having a relationship, I'm going for a smicha, and somebody says, says, you know who the Ravad is, right? And he's sitting there, he's like, who are you? You know what I mean? Like, how can you ask asking for smicha from me? I mean, come on, you got another... So I'm sitting there, I'm getting really nervous, like, who's the Ravad? He says, so then he wrote, in Hebrew, he said, who kote veze hagaot ala Rambam? So I said, oh, the Ravad! So he says, can't can you write it, write it. Okay, anyways, he says, you know what he wrote. So he basically said that when you're married, you don't say, if your wife has a, um, a, a sore, right? You're not supposed to say, your wife has a sore. You're supposed to say, I have a sore. In the sense that there is to be such union of the two that you feel the pain personally. So that's a unique statement between husband and wife. So in my understanding... Because the truth is, I have thought about the question, is the reason David and Yonason are used is because they are the extreme example of the relationship in relationship and Ava in the concept of relationship, and marital love is even beyond that. But it comes from the same idea. Okay? But, it's, but, but the truth is, because it's not Tully Bedover. Because Tully Bedover means a specific reason, I love for this reason, and so forth, and so forth. not Tully Bedover, means not for a reason, it's because of a bonding between the two individuals. Not because of a specific object that you hope to get in return, but 
a bonding. Okay, but good, good point. A good point. But that's what is it. But that's that's my understanding of why why none of the marital relationships was used in that in that regard because it was still a relation a, a relationship. We'll get a little bit more to that. Okay, so let's look at um, at this concept. So the difference between the marital relationship and the and the parental relationship. And Christianity obviously sets the ideal to be the parental relationship, and the Judaism setting the ideal has to be is the marital relationship. Okay, so why is it that the marital relationship is the ideal within Judaism, and not the ideal in Christianity, and that the relationship that, that and the and the parental relationship is the ideal in Christianity and not within Judaism? Okay, any ideas? Um. Parental, you, love is usually, it's a one, it's more of a one-way street where the parent has love for the child, but the parent is doing, doing everything for them. That's interesting. Okay. Parental relationship is, for the ideal, is a two-way where. Okay. Uh, I mean, you do hope that the child has a feeling of love for the parent. I, I didn't say the child didn't have a love. Is that right. if the, the parent is ultimately doing right. it for the child? The, fa- right. the fact is, is that there's an interesting aspect of it. See, you see, people people try to to sidestep the issue of what is selfishness and what is what is selfishness and what is selfishness. Selflessness. Point is, is that it's not so simple to really define the distinction between the two because a lot of times when you want to help out someone else, there's an aspect of selfishness to it. You get a certain Benefit, like people don't recognize this when you know, talk in terms of Christmas, right? Better to give than to receive. It's saying basically you have a better feeling from giving, from giving certain things and so forth. But the truth of the matter is, what it's pointing out is that even selflessness has an aspect of, of, of meeting a personal desire. So the truth is, is that Judy rec- Judaism recognizes that there's a strong personal desire in the parent to take care of the child. So it does have an aspect of serving the, the parents' the parents' um, um, desires. So the truth is that the attack from, from Christianity in terms of in terms of sexuality, wait a second. Even someone who's being selfless or, or, or even someone in terms of in terms of giving giving many times because that person is getting a tremendous good feeling from that giving. Right? Yeah. So um, I'd like to relate everything back to the tree of knowledge and this kind of story of the beginning of Genesis. Okay. And it seems to me that that we are unique and that we have an internal voice that, that God put in us, and also an external voice. Mm-hmm. And the relationship for a parent to child is the internal voice, getting back to it's instinctual. And the husband wife relationship is a, is the external voice of God. It's a more elevated relationship. It requires more commitment beyond the instinctual. It requires refinement of the individual to really to, to succeed. Um, interesting perspective. I mean, the fact is, the argument would be that in order to have a good relationship, you do have to work on it. But the truth is, the ma- the major drive of the relationship also includes, in terms of including the sexual relationship. But there's pleasure associated with every relationship. Aha. Uh-huh. So, 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 why particularly pick on the sexual relationship? Yeah. Okay, so you say because it seems to be a physical relationship. I mean, the truth is, the reason Amnon and Tamar is used as the example of Tali Badaver is because it is the sexual relationship is open to being Tali Badaver. The fact of the matter is. Is, is that the sexual relationship is is dependent upon physical attraction, and physical attraction does mean certain things. It says, "Hey, looks good," so therefore it does seem to say that there's something about that. So the truth is, is that it seems to be, how does that? How do you take that physical attraction and turn it to a pure love connection? But there still has to be that physical attraction, which is Tali Badava, which would seem to, which is what happened on the Tama. It was so Tali Badava, I mean, you know, being dependent upon something, 
that once he slept with her, he had absolutely no no reason to to relate to her. He, they, 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 he was discussing. Amnon and Tamar, they were... Um, Amnon and Tamar were two children of David who... Oh, absolutely. Right, yeah, but the fact is, is why... They, they, there wasn't an essential aspect to it because of certain technicalities in the halacha. So, but the point is, Amnon wanted to marry Tamar. Um, but, but the fact of the matter was really a sexual attraction. But the point is, is that that that's what you're getting at is, is that that sexual attraction it seems to be part of the of the marital relationship, but it can really. Take away from the from the genuineness of the love because there is a a um, there is something it's dependent upon a physical attraction and a physical attraction is dependent upon very concrete things right right I like someone to look like this you know what I mean and so forth so the truth is you are talking about much more concrete definitions. But 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 the um, but you're right. The child relationship, the parental child relationship, it exists, and it exists. You just have to work on it. But the fact of the matter is, it inherently exists internally in the person, right? You don't fall in love. You you basically that love exists right to, right right from the first moment. It to do with the element of choice. Right, yeah. right. Seems, seems to be. Seems like the child relationship, the, the parent child relationship, it's just, it comes with being alive. Yeah. But that, yeah, but that would make it, but that would make it an argument that says, listen, you don't have to make a choice, therefore, it's even a more pure form of love. And there was all these arguments that you don't have to make a choice means it's a pure form of love. Right? Well, you know, it exists. Food, could be the yeah, or, love. or, I, I mean, the fact is, is that what you're talking about is the, um, is is strong definitions is something better because you're working it, something better because it's pure because you're working it, or is it pure because it exists inherently? And and you're arguing no, it's pure if you work on it, but there's an argument that says no, wait a second, that little moment that that love is formed is totally pure, because. It can't exist. It, it, it can't not exist. Okay. But if it clearly <clears throat> parental love and marital love, I mean, if you put definitions, are two separate things, right? I mean, they're not the Go- elements associated with them. I mean, they're, they're not. But it goes back to relating. The fact of the matter is, it's still an aspect. What love really is about is relating to other people. See, it's interesting because the word ava. You know the, the the old theory, like you know, um, Eskimos have uh, many words, many many nouns for types of snow, because every type of snow is different and it's very important to them. We just have the word snow. Um, it's interesting because we have one word, Ava, and it's applied to Ava Hashem, the love of God. It's applied to to you know, haftes recha kamocha to love your neighbor applies vaha. You know, haftes you should love the, the convert. Right. The point is, is that is that it's interesting because there's no there's no mitzvah of love in parents. You know that that's that's sort of given. You know, but the fact is, you still use the word ahava, this type of ahava, and so forth. The truth is, is what is ahava really about? It's a type of bonding. What love really is is saying I'm bonded to you, right? Well, and different parameters, like the parent-child relationship, is all about the parent nurturing the child, but the marital relationship is more about sharing. So, so which which relationship is more significant? So, so the 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 so the Christian is saying the nurturing child, but the fact is, what about the child relationship? So, the child relationship, if you talk in terms of parenting, the child relationship also becomes significant in the sense that you wish to be nurtured by. The priest, or by the or by the deity, which makes you more subject to the deity, which comes from the idea of grace. If I can't do it on my own, and I recognize, you know, it's like, you know, 
if the child sits there and says, Mommy and Daddy, please help me, right? That's an aspect of, it's a certain type of relationship that that really shows the the bonding in a certain way from the nurturing, or from the and that and that becomes the model for for Christian love, for the daily love, which is the aspect of grace, right? The point is is that is that if you're going to talk in terms of sharing and so forth, you're talking a different form of love. Then what is the relationship when you say, you know, Hafsiyas Hashem Alakecha? You're not doing anything for God. Why don't you, are you sharing with God in that relationship? What does that mean? No. So there's two kinds of love in Greek, in, in, in the Greek language. Right. So is that, is that, it have, but that's, presumably that was had a major influence had, on, on, on Christian, because, because Eros and, and, what's the other one? Ag, Ag, agape, yeah. I think, right? So the fact of the matter is, is agape is a more pure love of the parental love, and Eros is the sexual love, and it really threw out of, it came out of Greek, and that really was adopted by the, by Christians and so forth and so. Forth. But Judaism only had one term, Ava, mm. right? And it didn't see that kind of. It, did it see distinctions? Yes, but it didn't have that because ultimately. Is there a word for lust in Hebrew? Taiva. There's a word for lust, but the truth of the matter is, is that lust has its place also. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But the fact is, is that it really comes down to love within Judaism being some type of connection that puts Eris and Agape together. Because what you're doing is really forming a bonding between two people. And bonds can form because the end justifies the means, which is really Kali Badover, or some reason that you feel connected to that person. Which goes beyond the 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 uh, um, what you're gonna get out of it. Okay. Okay.